Got great news. The truck is gonna be back with me. I cannot wait. Well, good morning, wet head and all, but I'm getting ready to start work here. I stayed in bed a little bit longer today, just enjoying a cup of coffee. The dogs and I did not sleep well last night, so did not want to get out of bed this morning. But I did get up right away this morning, put Mason out, let him do his potty. He wanted back in bed. So I started my coffee and then all three of us, <laughs> Missy, Mason, and I, shared the bed and watched some. I don't know if anybody else watches this, but um, it's called, oh my gosh. I mean, The Curse of Oak Island on History Channel. I believe it's on like season nine or 10 now. And I've been watching it ever since. Um, I don't know. They've got me hooked. So I bet I was in bed watching that today. But when I got in the shower today, I missed a phone call from the diesel mechanic shop and the truck is done. Technically, it was done yesterday, but they wanted it to do what they're calling a cold soak. They wanted to hook the truck back up again and start it up and make sure everything was reading like it was supposed to. And thankfully, yes, it's reading like it's supposed to. But now I've got some decisions to make. As you know, I do work remotely. However, I was supposed to be south of San Antonio by now. Um, I would have been there a week by now, or a week now, doing work. Getting, we're ironing out scripts for videos, um, campaigns that we're gonna work on, and then I would go out and get footage. <sighs> now, since I am running so much later, because of the truck, I'm so much closer to Christmas. Do I stay for Christmas? Um, this Christmas is going to be very difficult without Ed because Ed, Ed loved Christmas. We would have had the RV decorated by now. He would have been wearing his Santa hat. So now do I stay with family during Christmas time? Or do I go? I don't know. Um, I think some of the deciding factors is going to be the weather. Since I'm here in Iowa, thankfully we had a really big dip and it got really cold for a while. But thankfully that kinda, I'm gonna change my hand. Thankfully, that kind of turned around, and as you can see, the sun's out again today, and it's, even though uh, we're dipping below freezing during the day, it is warming up, and it's warming this metal box up, which feels super good. Um, I don't know. Comment below, what do you think I should do? Um, I've got some decisions to make. I had not even thought that far because number one, I needed to get um, the truck repaired and number two, I needed to be working um, to pay for that truck repair. <clears throat> um, I will say, I think the truck repairs are about um, $3,200. It was 18 and then we just kept piling on more and more issues and more and more labor. Uh, <laughs> I could have taken some risk, but I think at this point, I don't think taking risk is a good decision. And I am at a reputable company right now and I'm in a safe place. I thought that was a better decision to do that versus being on the road and I could have been stuck alongside the road and then the truck would have been towed and the trailer would have been towed and who knows what um, company, type of company that I'd be dealing with. So it could have cost me even more money 
not a lot and and um, stress. So, and I even put makeup on today. Darn it. So I think I made a good decision there, but I was focusing so much on that. Now I need to focus on what is what am I going to do? Am I going to stay? I kind of leaning towards staying. I don't know. So I've got some thinking to do and decisions to, to make. Right now, I need to focus on, I've got a wet head. I did put makeup on today, which is kind of scary. And I need to get to work. I have a video that is due to go out on Monday. And then I can start focusing on some mid-form videos that are going to um, be after the holidays which will give me more time to get going on those and also give my boss time to get them reviewed. So I'm going to get to work. Got great news. The truck is gonna be back with me. I cannot wait. The auto mechanic shop is going to come and pick me up in here in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna take a break from work, go get the truck, run a couple errands, and then I'll be back. But I'm so excited. This chapter, this, I don't know how to explain it. I'm hoping that the gremlins are gone. We do not want any more gremlins. No, 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 no. So I'm hoping that this is going to be it. And now I can start making plans on when I'm going to get on the road. Sorry, the sun, but oh well. Can you tell I'm in the truck? It feels so good to be back in the truck. And it started right off like it used to. Just boom, fired right up. Oh, this is going to be great. The gremlins are gone. Hey, we've got great news. We've got rid of the gremlins and I'm going to be moving on. However, I do want to go over a couple things with you in case one of you are having issues with a similar truck than I have. I have a 2012 F350 Julie with a 6.7 diesel engine in it. That was a mouthful. <laughs> but the original issue was and this is something that we were dealing with before ed and i even went and started on our trip randomly it would turn over and try to start but it wouldn't fire and start so at that time ed went ahead and changed the starter and we put new batteries in it which i'm glad we did because when we did we realized that the one was bulging and definitely needed replaced so keep an eye on your batteries people but oh the content it really was very sporadic when that happened so when we went out on our trip we didn't really have any issues so we didn't address it well then we're gonna fast forward and um, since Ed's passed, I've been back on my son's farm, as you can see. It's the sporadicness, I hope that's a word, has definitely had increased. So it happened more and more often. It would never throw an engine code, and when you put the reader on it, it would never read anything. The mechanic that I was working with, um, he kind of looked over the starter, thinking maybe it was a starter issue, a loose wire. I've got a cat climbing at me. This is Gold Sonic. Gold Sonic is a very, an outdoor cat, very loving. You've probably seen him on other videos. Hopefully I didn't hit my microphone. But <clears throat> he's not getting on the truck. <laughs> Um, 
as I, okay, let me rewind a little bit. So the mechanic really never could diagnose why it was doing that, nor could he get it recreated for him because I left the truck with him for a couple of days and told him, just drive it, just do it like a daily driver, drive it. And it never would recreate it. Well, as we got closer to like today, it just got more and more. So that was one issue. And then I took off to head south for the winter. As you know, I threw an engine code and it has been in and out of the diesel mechanic shop for two weeks now. I will have to say they were fantastic. I will put a link in the bottom um, in the description of this video. So you are aware of this um, diesel mechanic shop. They do regular autos, they do trucks, and then they also do semis. So their experience and they have, they actually run two shifts of mechanics. So that is extremely helpful. But the mechanic that I was working with and was um, assigned to my truck was fantastic. I call him a kid because I think he was probably in his 30s, but he's not really a kid, but for me he is. But I was really happy with him because he would explain things to me. Sometimes mechanics talk to you or talk to women as you have no idea what's going on. No, I do not know everything about a vehicle, but I can sure do my research and ask around. Anyway, so now moving forward. Yesterday, they, no, two days ago, they called me and said, it is, your truck is done. If you do not have to have it back right away, we would like it to, we would like to, what they call it, cold soak it. They're going to let it soak overnight, start it up tomorrow, run diagnostics, and run it to make sure that the issues are fixed. They called me and said, it's good to go. So they actually sent a driver over to pick me up and I got the truck and I was kind of nervous at first when I stopped if it was going to immediately do the same thing and boy this baby just go boom fryers right up like it's supposed to. But I want to go over a couple things um, <clears throat> like I said so if anyone else is having similar issues this might be thing. Now, there is more than one thing that they diagnosed on this truck. Number one, they put a new fuel cap on it because it was um, created a vacuum effect in the fuel tank. So that is number one. Number two, the random starting issue, and then it actually increased as time went on, was fixed by the cam position sensor. That was found when we were in the parking lot, and I couldn't recreate, recreate any code, but as we went through with the starting test, his computer was able to catch that. So thank goodness, because it never put an engine code on, he caught that. Um, number two is the, no, actually number three <laughs> is the volume control valve. That is what he thinks may have caused when I was going to leave and it put me into limp mode is what the issue was. So that was when your truck is ask, asking for an amount of fuel, how much fuel it gives it. When that is functioning properly, there's no issues. When it is either sticking open, sticking halfway, whatever that may be, then we're going to have an issue. And that's what the engine code light that came on for me when I was leaving and put me in the lit mode. That's what that one was. Okay. Then the fourth one was a exhaust DOC and DPF sensor. It's located on the exhaust. That is the one that they were having difficulties with even though he heated it up, spent a lot of time on it trying to get it off. He couldn't get it off. Um, so he did have to grind down the sensor and retain the threads and then he was able to, um, he took the exhaust off too <laughs> to get to it, to do all of that. And then once he got that done, he was able to reinstall the new sensor and put the exhaust back on. 
So after fixing those four items, now I have a great running truck. So that chapter is over. Thank goodness. It is over. The gremlins are left back in the diesel mechanic shop. And I am actually has my have my camera sitting on the truck right now recording this video. Okay. So what's next? We are one week from Christmas. So I have made the decision that... I am going to stay put on my son's farm and spend um, this Christmas with family. So I'm going to spend this Christmas with family. Um, it's going to be a difficult one. But that's where we're at. And I'm going to um, hopefully give you a little sneak peek into how that's going to look for me this year. And let's hope and pray and please everyone here that is watching this video, cross your fingers and toes for me that this weather here in Iowa is going to continue because I'm standing out here with the sweatshirt on. No, I wouldn't want to spend a whole lot of time out here, but I'm very comfortable yet. So the weather is still great here in Iowa. I'm sorry. And looking forward... It looks like the weather is going to be good. So hopefully we're not picking up a whole lot of Daisy, but she's upset because the chickens are out grazing like they're supposed to. So we're just going to close out this video before she drives me absolutely crazy and you as well. I just want to thank everyone for watching. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so and hit that bell so you get notification every time I post a new video. Thanks everyone.